Hello everyone, my name is Sahaj Gandhi and I'm here to present to you about international free trade agreements and to specifically talk about CETA and what CETA means to Canada and Canadians. I just finished my first year here at Ryerson University. I'm enrolled in a program called Accounting and Finance, which is part of Ted Rogers School of Management. I intend to major in Finance and minor in Accounting. Okay, so a broad definition of what an international free trade agreement is trade agreement is. It can be defined as a contract or a treaty between two or more countries which allows trade of goods and services without any tariffs or hindrances. So the importance of trade agreements in today's society. We live in an interdependent society which basically means that countries in today's world rely on each other for goods and services. Trade agreements also are important for global economic growth. Because trade agreements play a key role in making companies more efficient. We recently saw how important it is for countries to import and export from other countries after Britain opted to leave the European Union and their economy completely broke down. Their British pound is at, an all t is at a record low in the past 30 years. Their stock market has completely gone down as well. Okay, so some advantages of trade agreements. Trade agreements allow for a lot of companies to come into other countries, which and then creates competition. And then competition promotes lower prices and innovative products and services, which benefits the consumers around the globe. Free trade agreements also create jobs. Because companies are able to go into other companies with more ease, they're able to create more jobs in that country. Free trade agreements also allow foreign direct investment. For example, the North American Free Trade Agreement, often known as NAFTA, allowed American investors to freely invest in the Canadian real estate market, which benefit the real estate market by raising the prices of real estate all around Canada. Free trade agreement also set international standards on products and services, which raises the quality of products and services around the globe. Some more advantages include cheaper imports. Since businesses are able to ch import cheaper goods, they are able to offer cheaper products for us consumers. Also, due to economies of skill, since companies are able to offer products to much bigger market, they are able to offer it at a cheaper rate and more, vari more varieties of products. Which also means that consumers are provided with goods from all around the globe. For example, my suit here, my blazer was made in Thailand, my pants were made in Indonesia, and my tie was made in China. We can't imagine a society today where we only have products and services from just our country. For example, you go to the supermarket, you find fruits and vegetables from all around the globe. Also, free trade agreements help to improve living conditions in developing countries. Because multinational corporations have a lot of money, they're able to offer higher wages to the laborers in poorer countries, which raises the living conditions there. Some disadvantages include increase of job outsourcing. Since for one country to gain job, another country must lose some. Also, this means less tax revenue for the government since no tax is being collected on all the trade going on. This also Trade agreements also allow for exploitation of weak laws in certain countries, which then allows exploitation of workers and it also causes pollution. Because developing countries don't have such strong laws, or even if they have strong laws, they don't have strong regulation or anyone even regulating the laws, multinational corporations are able to exploit the weak laws by offering next to nothing pay, hiring child labor. They're able to cause pollution by dumping in the rivers, they're, they're polluting the air, and there's no one regulating this. It, it has created quite a disaster. Another disadvantage includes economic dependence. Because countries rely on multinational corporations for jobs in their country, they rely on that multinational corporation economically, which can prove to be very dangerous. Some more disadvantage, dis disadvantages include international monopolies. Because of trade agreements, Giants like Walmart and Best Buy are able to dominate the markets, which then hurts local businesses and they, they're forced to shut down, which then 
hurts the Canadian economy. Also, due to the economic in the inter sorry, due to the economic dependence, this also creates political dependence. Politicians have to bow down to the wants and needs of the multinational corporations because they rely on them for the economic wealth of their country. Also, free trade agreements allow for multinational corporate to steal patents from developing countries because the laws are not, are not strict there. Okay, so CETA. CETA is the comprehensive economic and trade agreement between Canada and the European Union. The official negotiations began in 2009 and they concluded in 2014. Because this was done before Britain voted to leave the European Union, Britain is included in this agreement. Okay, so what are the advantages of CETA for Canada? Well, CETA provides access to more European products and services for Canadian consumers. For example, uh, Europe has a wide market of automobile makers such as Renault. They might want to come into Canada after this agreement comes into effect. CETA will also allow direct investment into our economy from Europe, which will be very beneficial to the Canadian market. CETA also provides Canadian businesses access to a much larger market. The European market includes several countries which has GDPs a lot larger than ours. This will allow Canadian businesses to go into those markets and earn revenue which they can then bring back into Canada. Although CETA has some advantages, it also has a lot of disadvantages. These include the agreement that they signed that to adopt the European measures for drug patent uh, restoration. Currently, Europe has a plan which basically states that a patent should typically last around 20 years, but they will only allow market authorization after the government approves it, which can take five or more years. In which case, the government must compensate the company with two years worth of revenue. And if the Canada is to adopt these measures, this can cost taxpayers big money and it could also affect our healthcare system. Canada has also agreed to double the quota for dairy imports from Europe, which is bad news for Canadian dairies as they don't operate year round and they suffer hard because of the climate as it is. And we also agreed to take away barriers for European boost companies to come into Canada which will allow a European booze to be a lot less expensive, which, which is bad news for Canadian wine and hard liquor companies, which is a good chunk of Ontario's economy. CETA also makes it easier for European automobile companies to enter Canada. As I mentioned before, Europe has a wide market of automakers, and if they are to come into Canada without any tariffs, and it is easier for them to come in, they, they can completely take over the market which can be trouble for Canada because a lot of the American automakers have factories in Canada. For example, I've worked in a Chrysler factory before and there's also a Dodge factory here as well. Okay, so some more disadvantages include Canada is giving the European companies equal power to bid on Canadian natural resources. This to me is the worst part of this whole deal. Canada has the largest supply of fresh water in the world. We have one of the largest um, sorry, forests in the world as well, which of course means wood. And if we give these to equal rights to the European companies, it is not beneficial for Canada or Canadian citizens. New research also shows that the benefits of increased inv investments and increased imports are only illusory, which basically means that after NAFTA, Canada has only been saying that we have increased investment by 90%. But what they don't say is a lot of this is not new businesses coming into Canada or American businesses investing into Canada. It's also a lot of the takeovers, which give America a lot of control over Canada. Okay, so the final verdict on CETA. CETA is just a tool for multinational corporations to exploit Canada and the Canadian businesses. Therefore, we should vote, not vote, sorry, we should write to our PM, to our local MPs, and even hold protests to stop this agreement to come into effect. Because it can be big trouble for 
us, for our kids, for our grandkids, and everyone down the line. Thank you.